So welcome to my presentation on Jenkins machine learning plugin. Uh, I'm so excited to present my work uh, I have done for this uh, GSOC. And also I would like to thank my mentors, uh, Bruno, Ionis, Maki and Shivai for uh, great feedbacks and the suggestions. And also thankful for uh, our Jenkins org admins that who makes this uh, event successful. So let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm, I'm a GSOC student for machine learning plugin uh, Jenkins for 2020. And uh, I'm doing my major in uh, computer science and engineering. So before uh, we move into this uh, uh, technical aspects of the machine learning plugin, uh, I would like to explain a little bit about uh, what is machine learning operations. So if you, if you take any machine learning operations, uh, continuously, continuous analyze and uh, continuous training is a very essential part uh, to improve this quality of this machine learning products. So uh, as you see in the diagram, uh, data scientists uh, will analyze the data sets and then they uh, build their model and train their model. And finally, they will uh, hand it to the DevOps engineers and they will uh, test and deploy and they will do the rest of uh, uh, production works using the application code. So uh, let's, let me explain about uh, how it's possible, uh, how they are achieving using, this, uh, uh, using the plugins of the Jenkins in the, uh, in the ML operations. So if you take uh, one machine learning operations, there must be uh, uh, multiple steps like uh, training, pre-processing, uh, and validation. So there's a lot of uh, uh, intermediate steps are there. So for the clustering tools, uh, you can uh, make it possible to use one of those uh, Docker plugin or a Kubernetes plugin. So there's a, a lots of clustering tools available in uh, Jenkins. And also uh, if you want to manage your source codes, uh, you have a JIT plugin. And uh, if, if, if you have a large size, uh, large file size, like uh, large uh, data sets, uh, large models, you have to manage that also. So we, uh, Jenkins has some uh, advanced plugin like S3 publishers. Uh, you can uh, easily publish your models or data sets to this AWS S3. And if you want to uh, analysis, if you want to submit your analysis and if you want to publish your reports uh, in somewhere, uh, you have some analytic plugins also available in the Jenkins. And uh, Jupyter Notebook is widely used by uh, data scientists to, uh, to analysis and uh, training models. So in addition, uh, we are giving this uh, Jenkins machine learning plugin uh, to leverage the, all the plugins to uh, make the ML operations successful. So let me explain uh, what are the features we have implemented during this GSOC period. So the first one is a very uh, data science community friendly configuration about uh, about the kernels. So if you want to check uh, what are the kernels you have installed in your system, you can just go to your terminal or your command prompt. You can just type uh, Jupyter kernel, kernel spec list. So it will uh, display all the kernels you have installed in your system. So I will explain a little uh, more when we're doing the demo how to do that. And uh, let me pass to the next slide. And we have this wrapper included in our plugin. Uh, that will helpful uh, for uh, converting your Python or converting your notebooks to the Python or JSON. Or if you want to rename this notebook, uh, you can do with this wrapper including the plugin. And this is our main feature of this plugin. So uh, we have to uh, we have to give the ML task name, which will be helpful if you have any artifacts like uh, images, HTML generated by the notebook. It will be saved under the name. Uh, like if, for example, it will be saved under the training folder. So it will, it, it's the purpose of this uh, giving machine learning task name. And the next one is uh, you have to, uh, you have to select one of kernels you have configured in the kernel configuration. So for example, I have selected for this screenshot as a JavaScript and, and you can uh, give this uh, code or if you can write the code directly or you can uh, give the uh, notebooks uh, notebooks name or a script name in the file password. So, uh, so finally, uh, we have a features like if you have any, uh, any images or HTML generated in the Jupyter notebook, uh, it will be saved under uh, workspace. So 
there's a action in the left panel you can see image and html so you can click it and and you can view what are the images generated in the Jupyter notebook so we will see a uh, very detailed in the demo so yeah i will uh, go to the demo directly so before we going demo uh, i have a github repository uh, which contains some uh, csv data sets and some uh, python enabled notebooks and uh, r enabled notebooks so for this demo i'm going to ch i'm going to uh, run this uh, Python enabled notebook and uh, R notebook. So you can see here, this is a R notebook. You can see uh, they have all, or they have used uh, R codes here. So there's a pure R code. So they have using a GP plot to uh, make the graphs in this notebook. And uh, the other one is uh, the, it's, it's using the Python code directly, you can see that. So for graphing, they are using the Matplot library. So, yeah, so first we are going to create, uh, uh, we are going to configure our kernels here. So you can go to uh, configure system and then you can find, uh, you can find kernel configurations here. So you can just uh, add new kernel here and uh, I will tell you how to, uh, how, to uh, how to find what are the kernels have been installed in your system. You can just type uh, Jupyter kernel okay, uh, list. So uh, these are the uh, list of kernels that I, have, that I have installed in my system. So I just choosing uh, Python 3 and uh, R. So I just configuring Python 3. So the language, I just type Python. Uh, for what is uh, so the launching time mode I just setting as a default 10 seconds uh, so it takes time uh, to connect it, it the launching time mode is uh, how long it would take to uh, connect to this uh, kernel from the Jenkins and and the max success is uh, how many lines can be uh, sent back to this uh, Jenkins from the kernel so you can here have a test connection button you can uh, test your uh, kernels from uh, from here, so so I'm adding also a new kernel for IR. Like we have we have seen that there's IR kernel. So for this R, so I just setting this hundred and I'm testing this uh, kernel here. So yeah, we are good to go with this kernel configurations. So so we're gonna create a simple freestyle job for this uh, for this demo. Final. Okay, just selecting this time. Uh, yeah, so for that, uh, I'm going to check out my repository here. So I just get in my repository. This here, I just have to know. And uh, for building these notebooks, uh, this is the essential part of this uh, plugin. Uh, you have to give uh, if you want uh, if it's a training you can just add training and you can select either uh, one of these so we are going to run here uh, python enabled notebook so i just uh, selecting my python notebook uh, okay the name so i just giving the name of the uh, python notebook because it is already exist uh, it's it has it will be uh, checked out from the github to uh, jenkins workspace so you can directly I use the uh, name of this uh, notebook and uh, also there's I will add another builder for IR so I just yeah, and I'm selecting this IR so for the file uh, I just uh, giving the name of our notebooks yeah so yeah, we are all good to go with this uh, job configuration. So we just one step left. Uh, I will run that. So here uh, you can see uh, this. Uh, this is a checkout console log, and you can see there's HTML is added to the training uh, folder, and there's a lots of images have been added to this training. 
So if you want to uh, check whether it is added to this uh, workspace, you can just check here. And the generated uh, images and uh, the other uh, are, are, uh, plots are here. So you can even uh, try to view your HTMS generated in the notebook. Yeah. So if you want to uh, publish these uh, results to somewhere, you can use the HTML publisher plugin or you can use, you can leverage the other plugins to uh, make the result viewable in somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the demo part. Uh, I will shift into this uh, uh, main presentation. So uh, this is the link to our uh, uh, GitHub repository. And if you feel any issues about our plugin, uh, uh, I forgot to say that uh, we have released our plugin uh, version 1.0.1. .1. You can directly uh, download from the main update center. So if you, if you, when you are using, if you feel any issues, if you feel any errors, you can report it here. We are happy to help you. And if you have any, uh, any questions, you can ask directly in our Jitter channel dedicated for GSOC machine learning project. And uh, this is my uh, demo repository. Uh, you can uh, use it if you, if you want to try that demo I have shown before. And uh, I will show you, uh, I will show you uh, what are the kernels available in the uh, Jupyter kernel project. So you can see if you want to run a Julia code, if you want to run Haskell, Haskell, if you want to run Ruby, you can just install these uh, kernels in your system and you have to configure that in your Jenkins and you can directly use that. So that's the best part of this uh, machine learning plugin. And yeah. So uh, for future for future improvements, uh, we are trying to implement. Uh, we will try to implement the issue. Like uh, at this moment, we have to give this uh, uh, the kernel features, and we have to uh, type it manually. So if we in, if we if we if we implemented this automatically, adding a label to the agent uh, based on the kernel features, we don't have to type that. We can uh, have a drop down list or something like that or we can uh, leverage that thing to easily uh, configure our kernel kernels. So that's the thing we are concerning right now. And, uh, and we, we were also struggling when we are uh, testing this code, testing this plugin because uh, everything is uh, in, in the back, there's lots of Python work. So uh, we also expecting to write uh, more tests in the plugin. And uh, in ML operations, uh, we have to uh, can, we have to concern about the performance of the plugin because uh, performance is uh, one of the uh, essential thing in the ML operations. So that's the thing we ha we are concerning right now. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you once again. Thank you for joining with with this presentation and thanks for my mentors and thanks for Martin to hosting this uh, presentation. And uh, yeah. Thank you, Logi. Um, do we have comments or questions? Yeah, sure. Not that I see so far in the chats. So if anyone has any questions, please ask uh, using Zoom Q&A and we will uh, ask presenters. And in a while, while we wait for questions, um, if mentors or other uh, panelists would like to give some comments, please do so. Oleg, if I may comment, this is uh, Yanis Muchachos. I was one of the mentors. Um, and, um, you know, we have uh, uh, work now um, twice last year and this year, and finally we succeeded. And I think it has uh, progressed quite uh, well. Logi was uh, a very uh, excellent student, and he was able to... Um, bring together a lot of technologies that are required for this particular plugin, which um, is a little bit challenging, but uh, you know, he rose through the challenge and uh, I think we have a really nice version 1.0 now that uh, a lot of us really, uh, you know, as users now are excited and waiting to, to use. So um, I am really thankful to the GSOC um, 
a program for making this a reality. And, and I think we're moving into a, a great area uh, with new Jenkins applications. Thanks for your feedback. Yeah. And uh, I mean, like, it's fine. I'll also just like to, you know, speak a couple of uh, words for Logi because, you know, it has been really amazing, you know, working with Logi on this project because, you know, first of all, working on it from scratch, you know, and Logi, you know, from the start, you know, he was always, you know, up to the task and always completing all of the tasks before, you know, uh, the deadlines. And that was, you know, probably the most, uh, you know, the best, uh, you know, work that we saw was, you know, always make, maintaining that consistency and also coming up with, you know, great solutions for solving all the different kind of issues that we run into with the, with the plugin. And uh, there were also instances, you know, where we did take in some, uh, you know, suggestions from external people as well. And those are also implemented and probably, you know, like one of the best features at the end was to add multi-language support, you know, not just Python, but also the other kind of, you know, data science languages that people will be using. A lot of them we are using R, Julia. So having that, you know, integration as well within this uh, plugin makes it so accessible for all different kind of, you know, data science related uh, work workflows, right? So it was, you know, like a treat to be working with Logi and all the other, you know, uh, mentors as well, both Ionis, Marky in the starting and, uh, you know, Bruno. So, I mean, in all, you know, uh, Logi made it completely, you know, successful and I'm like so proud of, you know, whatever work he has done for the plugin. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Shivai. Thanks for your compliments. Thank you. I would just like to uh, echo what everybody else has said and also just say, Lohi, you're an amazing person. You not only put together a very futuristic plug in here, but you did it during a pandemic, which is no, you know, no, that's a pretty big deal. So thank you and thank you to all the other mentors. Great, thanks for all your great comments, everybody. And um, let's move on 